All right, 13 minutes to midday. We are talking movies. We are joined by Colleen McFadden. And uh, up next uh, on the list, Colleen, we have got uh, a Marvel installment. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a Marvel movie, I think, haven't we? What was the last one we had? Black Panther was the last Black one. Panther. It was about that November, was last, yeah. Yeah, November last year. So it's actually not a while. But uh, this is one that's been a long time coming, I think. Ant-Man. Absolutely. And and the really big hopes for this one. I think, you know, I know I know you like your sci-fi and your time zone, I, uh, time stuff. I don't know if you're as into the Marvel stuff and particularly the TV thing. This has all been set up really by Loki, the, the TV show that was very successful. And ever since Avengers, we've had loads of Marvel movies and they've all been fun, but they haven't been, you know, part of this big overarching story that we got for the first 10 years. And this supposedly is the one that's going to kick off the whole shebang again, that people are going to be lining up in their droves to find out what happens in the end, building up to a big Avengers movie. This and part of the the, 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 old, the, the the big, big plan that they have. This is what, Marvel Phase 2 or Phase 3? Or what phase are we on now? Four. I think we're or in four. Phase 4. Well, we're in Phase 4. I, I get a wee bit lost. I like them and I get a wee bit lost. But this is the one that they're ramping up because the last few movies have been successful but not mega hits and I think they're really a bit under pressure to to knock our socks off with this one so it's called Ant-Man uh, Quantumania a bit of a uh, uh, a, a play on Quadrophenia the, the classic okay. movie there <laughs> and what it is is Ant-Man and all his gang they're going to travel through time to change things now we know we've seen Spider-Man we know when you go change time Things do not work out well. And they're going to unleash this bad guy called Kang, who's played by an actor called Jonathan Majors, who we're going to see loads of lately because he's also the bad guy in Creed 3. That's going to be at the start of next month. So lots of big movies. This guy's just, we're just catching him at the time. He's rocketing to make a stardom. And he is the control, basically he's the controller of the universe. And he is not to be messed up with, even though he pretends Oh, everything's fine. I'm only here to help. You know, <laughs> it, okay, in okay. life, we should trust people who say they're here to help. In movies, in Marvel movies, never trust the guy who goes, yeah, I'm only here to help. Always the bad guy. So this looks spectacular, Rory. They're pushing 3D and everything because I've seen, the, I've just seen the trailers and uh, mind blown. It looks really exciting, really fun. And of course, is the stars... It a bit, is it a bit of a retread though? I mean, because we have so much of the Marvel multiverse going on and now we're getting into time travel. Is it all a bit, a bit too sort of mind-bending? I mean, is would it not be... And this is just me speaking. No, and I'm not a huge Marvel fan. But, but you are a Doctor be, Who fan. I am so, a Doctor you know, Who fan, exactly. But that's yeah. a show about time travel. But would yeah. it not be better um, to, you know, go in a very linear, you know, movie, start to finish without all this, you know... Timey wimey stuff. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey, to borrow. I, you, I agree. And I think they've got into the in the trenches bit, they got a bit bogged down with some of this lately. And supposedly this is the one to show, ah, this is what you meant. This is what the storyline is about. Right. This is the way you're going. That all the, the sort of stuff that they've been doing with different dimensions at different time is going to make sense in this movie. I, I won't. Nope. I'll tell you next Thursday. I'll send you a text. But this right. is the promise <laughs> that this is we're going to see the plan, the plot of the movie from this one. And, you know, one of the things the Ant-Men movies have been entertaining, partly, I think, because Paul Rudd, you know, big fan of Donny Gall, went on a stag party mm -hmm. at Donny Gall, if I remember right, rightly. Yeah. Um, he is a very entertaining, likable presence. And of course, in these movies, he's not a super genius and he's very good at explaining the obvious. He's often used for that. And he's, you know, I always trust him when I see him in a movie, you go, even if the movie's not great, he's going to be entertaining. So apparently this is the one they're putting their, st their stake down to go, You're, we're going to hook you in all over again with this one. This is, is it a jumping on point for, for let, let's say, somebody who sort of dipped in and out very casually into the, yep. into the Marvel Universe. Would this be an ideal jumping on point for someone? I think, yes, it would be. You probably want to know a little bit about it before, but this is the jumping on point for the next 10 movies. Okay. I think, you know, if you were to watch the movie 10, like no more than, you couldn't watch the final two Avengers movies without having seen all the others. You wouldn't yeah. watch Harry Potter 7 first. This is a jumping on point for it. But probably, Rory, you're right. At this stage, there are people who like these sort of movies and then there's people who just go, 
I am out. I'm tapping out. This is not for me. A bit like you and Magic Mike. Yeah. I suppose, though, <laughs> with, with, with your career as an exotic dancer in the past, I suppose maybe Magic Mike is just a bit too much like like work before you you went to the radio, is it? Well, this is it. Yeah, exactly. See, it brings back bad memories. Yep. Okay, moving yep. swiftly on. Right, so that, now, that's Ant-Man, and that is in theatres when? That is, starts next Friday. Next Friday. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit Time about Time for that midterm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. Now, here's one that I've been looking forward to talking about, um, purely because of the title. Yes, Sometimes with complicated stuff, like for example, I didn't want to, I was trying not to bore anyone too much with all the time travel stuff in Ant Man, but sometimes there's things you just go, I like this. It's called Cocaine Bear. And the whole idea is it's based on a, a true story right. and then wildly exaggerated for last. Well, Johnny, so what, rewind there a second. Did you say this is based on a true story? When I say based, I mean very loosely based. Right. Somebody did uh, conduct a huge robbery. Of of a drug lord, and they threw the drugs out of the plane to to go and pick them up later. A bear found the drugs and took the drugs. That did happen. Right. Now, I don't think the bear went on the rampage we get on this movie, which is very much paid for tongue and cheeks horror laugh. And what's most mind blowing? Not that it's a true story. Not that it's it's a horror movie where a bear takes a load of cocaine and goes hunting all the um. The, the campers and stuff like that in ever increasing funny ways. The most mind blowing thing is it was made in County Wicklow, even though it's a big Hollywood cast, it's made in <laughs> County Wicklow. So every time you're watching going, this could only happen in Hollywood. Then you go, actually, no, it happened in Wicklow. Hold on, now, I recognize been, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Wicklow. And, you know, it's not the bears I would worry about, you know. But, you know, I, ha I have to say, it looks really fun. It is clearly tongue-in-cheek. Some of the bear effects look a bit ropey, and I think that's okay. on purpose. I can't right. wait to see this. It's We're probably, two weeks it, away from this one. It's the same, same sort of elk as snakes on a plane. That's sort of a... Snakes on a plane is a perfectly good example. They Perfect. came up with okay. the title first and then went, we have to do the movie. Yeah, I, you know what? I think you're absolutely right. It, it sounds like, you know, I've got a great idea for a movie, or I've got a great, I've got a great title. I have a brilliant yep. title. Let's build a movie around that. <laughs> now, next, we'll have Bear on a Plane, Snakes on Cocaine. Who knows? We might have a whole franchise here. Oh, the possibilities are endless, Polly. But after a lot of really good but serious movies, I am ready for these this month. I am ready for a bit of nonsense. Knock it out of the park. Enjoy February. You know, it's my birthday month, but it could be a miserable, loud, cold month all the same. So let's go kick back, enjoy, leave our brains at home. They are not necessary for the next couple of weeks. Let's go watch a bear dream. high on cocaine. How about that? That sounds like a great night. How could you not? <laughs> <laughs> How could you say no to that? Collie, as always, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We'll talk to you in March and we'll, uh, we'll go back over um, some of the Oscar winners and some of the Oscar losers as well and everything that goes along with that. Thanks for joining us this morning, Collie. No problem. Always a pleasure, Rory. All right. Take care. That's Collie McFadgen there uh, talking to us all things movies and he'll join us again uh, in March and we'll be talking Oscars.